The debate rages on. Who is in the right? Who is in the wrong? Steven Crowder versus Jared Monroe versus his wife. It is a nasty legal proceeding. And there's a lot of interesting information that's coming out, a lot of arguments being made. So while I covered this story earlier today, now that many people have chimed in and given their opinions, I think it's worth addressing the opinions of many of these individuals and giving them their time. Because it's, it's interesting. There is certainly a uh, pro Hillary Crowder side, and even among conservatives and people who uh, I would consider friends. We are arguing. And I think it's worth having this debate. In divorce court, one big question is, as Lauren Southern responded to me, should a man have to pay the legal fees of his wife who is suing him? It's an interesting question. We'll take a look at the opinions of some individuals who are uh, putting out their thoughts, and we'll take a look at the evidence, but we'll break down a little bit of where we've gotten so far. After publishing this story about the lawsuit between uh, uh, Lauderth Crowder and former employee Jared Monroe, many people have chimed in. And Gerald Morgan of Lauderth Crowder has published an article, gone on uh, Lauderth Crowder and said, here's what you don't know running this source. I'll go through a bit of what he posted. And I believe I have it here. And uh, he does have this video. It's 32 minutes long. And we'll show you the argument made from Crowder. I'll then uh, respond to some of these posts. And this is the, the, the argument here is about father, father's rights, child support, the current legal system, and who's at fault. We, we have many people who are defending Hillary Crowder who are saying that Stephen Crowder is, is abusive. He has a rage problem, and he, he has a very heavy-handed business practice of trying to restrict and go after other people. Jared Monroe clearly has motive to try and uh, cause harm to Stephen Crowder, as it appears, according to Jared's own statements, they are in a legal dispute for business reasons. I think that alone makes it inappropriate for Jared to contact Stephen Crowder's ex-wife and work with her in any capacity in a divorce. I'm sorry, I'm just going to say it outright. Disagree with me if you'd like, comment below. But if Stephen Crowder's in a legal dispute with Jared over business issues with Jared, Jared says, that's his, his video, he'd he had issues pertaining to ownership of equipment that he that was his and Crowder's trying to take. That's his view. I don't, I don't have the receipts. I don't know who's who's doing what, but this is, the, this is the argument. He's in a legal dispute with Crowder and then makes contact with Crowder's ex-wife. That is teaming up in two separate legal itch, situations. And then you have the statement from Jared saying he doesn't want Crowder to see his kids. Now it looks like a personal vendetta for business reasons, and he is using a divorce proceeding to take take it out on Crowder. That's just how it appears. Tell me I'm wrong. I could be wrong. I'm just saying. Why would why would he get involved in this? So, of course, Gerald mentions that Hillary's father says he's trying to destabilize Stephen Crowder. Hillary and Jared met in Atlanta to discuss their strategy and took this picture. You can see uh, a text message saying I have tickets to the aquarium. We'll pick you up. Sweet. It's thanks. There's, uh, I don't know what that is. Is that a cake or something? Something that says, how he changed my mind. And they have this photo together. Jared's text, any scenario where Hillary and I team up is the end of him, Stephen. And it's his worst nightmare. Watch the real fear enter his eye when Tim asks the question. I don't know who Tim is. I don't know what it's referring to. Jared, uh, yeah, I don't know. Jared to Hillary. I think this is a scenario where several of us would be willing to attest to all of that. I just don't want him anywhere near those kids. That really, really disturbs me. Why is Jared getting involved in, in the divorce proceedings? I just I don't understand. He, Gerald says the whole scheme was to maximize profits that she couldn't get through the courts. The, here, here's uh, some statements from Hillary Crowder. The financial offer was serious and the business valuator, valuator and both of my attorneys agreed that the financial offer was good. Five million. Wow. Five million. But when it came to the children, his offer was I get all of all of June, some of July, two weeks in August and a week uh, in the fall up north. And while that's better than what I would get in court, I want more freedom than that. Wow. That's more than I would get in court. Crowder, this is crazy that people are like, if you look at these texts, I, I get it. This is Crowder's side. It certainly does look based on this that Crowder has been reasonable, giving her more than she would get in court, but she wants more. So there's an email saying, let's destabilize him. Gerald says, 
The lo- uh, from, per Hillary's father, the longer the divorce proceedings go on, the worse it is for Stephen Crowder. Remember the ring footage? Hillary deleted all other footage from that house and the lake residence, which was expressly barred by the court with a quote saying, Mrs. Crowder then intentionally deleted all their other footage that depicted the marital home, as well as all footage from their vacation lake residence, while under express orders from the court barring such actions. Again, in certain context, legally, you can say things that aren't true. And just because it's in a court document doesn't mean it's true. But there are certainly certain limits. You can't lie and say she deleted footage if she did not delete footage. Granted, that would just mean you are lying to the court. You can physically do it. So I don't know. I'm not saying this is true. I'm saying the likelihood is low that this is this is a falsehood. I got to tell you, man, I've been in legal proceedings and it is surprising. There, there's no legal system in this country. I got to be honest. I've been in so many legal situations. I am just surprised where the judges are basically their whole thing is stop fighting and shut up and go home. We don't care who's right. We don't care about justice. We care about you both shutting up. If one side is screaming like a baby and the other side is trying to be reasonable, the judge sides with the baby. I've been in way too many legal cases my whole life to have seen anything otherwise. This one's where it gets interesting. He says, you may have seen these public claims about hardships. Fact, Hillary is paid 25K a month by Stephen. Now, this is interesting because in this photo, the judge of the divorce proceedings ordered that LWC has to pay me $25,000 per month pursuant to a temporary order during the duration, duration of the divorce. Stephen tried to reduce that amount, but was unsuccessful. I can barely pay my divorce attorneys, let alone the attorneys in this litigation with that amount. To which I responded. I said, Crowder has to pay $25,000 in child support that his ex-wife uses to pay lawyers to go after him. He has to fund his own destruction. How effed is divorce court? Right. So Crowder is ordered by the court to give 25 k a month to his estranged wife as they go for these, th- through these proceedings. And she's spending that money going to court against him. That money is supposed to be for the kids. Lauren Southern chimes in. And Lauren, of course, is a friend. She says, yes, he's launched extraordinary lit- litigious lawsuits against her and family that she cannot afford because she quit her job to be a stay-at-home mom. He also then went for full custody of the kids. I, I got to pause right there, Lauren. It looks like according to the documents they posted, he was going for, uh, uh, he was actually giving up more than she would have gotten in court otherwise. So I, perhaps it would have been full custody, but I don't know uh, uh, what her response to that was. So I, I'm, not, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying, highlighting that. Thankfully, she was awarded some funds to prevent herself from becoming homeless and having her children taken. If you understood how much she's spending on lawyers, you'd know she's spending every cent of that defending herself. Should stay at home wives be able to have their children taken, taken from them and left homeless if their husband is extremely wealthy? Well, the answer, that, that's a loaded question. I'll answer it. I'll finish. It. Or should they be given a sliver of the money their husband is spending on lawyers to defend themselves? The answer to that question is no. Uh, I would say the first question is framed, uh, I would argue, uh, outside of the merits of logic and morality as it pertains to market law or to the market and law. Sorry. Should stay at home wives be able to have their children taken from them and left homeless if their husband is wealthy? Okay, well, that's a very, very broad question. The answer is mom, wives should not have their children taken away from them and be left homeless just because their husband is wealthy. That is to say, If a wealthy man has millions of dollars and divorces his wife, and then all of a sudden they go, well, your husband's wealthy, you no longer have a home. Well, no, obviously that shouldn't happen, but that's not what is happening, right? What's happening is that Stephen Crowder has money and she doesn't have money. There is no argument, period, where someone with no money should get free money from the person suing them to use to sue them back in any circumstances. Let's try this. You work for a company and the company is fires you. You say, I accuse company of wrongdoing. And the court goes, "Okay, company, you now have to pay him the money he needs to sue you. What? That's insane. What if Crowder was poor? It's a ridiculous argument that because Crowder has money, he is subject to having that money taken away from him. Well, if he was poor, he would just lose his kids. So that argument doesn't make sense. Let's invert it. Should a man lose his children because the wife found a new husband who can afford to sue him into oblivion and he can't fight back? Well, this is reality. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, a stay at home wife or otherwise. 
circumstances in law, if you have cash and you can afford afford the battle, you are more likely to win. The idea that because Crowder has money, he should have to pay for her legal defense is too communist. That, that was my response. It's too communist. I don't know if I have my, my response pulled up for me to accept. Now, you can certainly say, but it's not fair to the moms. Then don't get divorced. Get rid of no fault divorce. Divorce should only be in the most serious of circumstances, criminal actions. And then when it came for Crowder and Hillary with these problems, the judge should have said, you will go to counseling and therapy. You will not fight in front of your children. You are married. And this is a choice you made. And neither of you will be allowed to to break that. Now, should should there be evidence that Crowder's physically abusing or Hillary's physically abusing anybody or whatever? Now you're talking about criminal actions, threats and abuse. I don't I don't know the circumstances of Crowder and his wife, but it does not. It does not fly, in my opinion, that Stephen Crowder's wife can say it's not working. I want a divorce. Crowder says, OK, fine, we're getting a divorce. And then she goes, and you have to pay for it. Well, well, you're separating from him. But she chose to be a stay at home mom. She gave up her career for Steven Crowder. Welcome to the real world. That's it. I'm not playing this because she wanted to be a mom and wanted to get a, 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 a get a divorce. Crowder has to fund litigation against him. I just I, I, I don't agree with it. Sorry. Get your ducks in a row before it happens. That's just that's just the reality. The very rare circumstances where the husband is wealthy and like Crowder, it, it, it does not fly that this this precedent would would should stand. There, there are numerous stories I've seen people post where it's like, I got a divorce and my husband uh, 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 or someone's like my husband's family paid for it and I didn't have that resource. So I ended up losing. Yeah. Welcome to the real world. I am no fan of divorce. Marriage till death do us part. But it's become dating. So let's play this. If you choose to enter into a divorce, uh, into a marriage structure with no legal protections, you do not get to make someone pay for your legal actions against them. That makes no sense. I certainly think we have a problem here. Problem being, of course, if a woman wants to be a stay at home mom and then she has no money to her name because of it, that creates problems where if the marriage does go bad, she is of limited resources. That is a problem. The answer is not forcing someone to pay their opponent to sue them. It doesn't work. I don't know this. What suite is this? Um, Adriana Jacob says, in response to Jared Monroe with the new information coming out, watched again carefully. I have a new point of view. As a former talent agent who was maligned by The New York Times, a behemoth Hollywood agency and a hack journal who talked to my clients into breaching their NDAs and lying about me. My opinion is that my opinion is that this is a strategic attack on Crowder's business. Suing for tortious interference is the right move. Jared is a pawn in a larger effed up game. I don't see how, uh, which, which tweet do I, I have a tweet from, uh, Pearl somewhere. Crowder case updates. Hillary Crowder is receiving $25,000 a month in child support. Crowder has been covering her legal fees. Some people have pointed this out too. I don't know if this was in the video that Crowder's estate is paying her legal bills. Hillary reached out to Steven's friend and coworkers in an attempt, uh, in an attempt to, uh, I don't know. I think you got to uh, attempt to extort him. Jared is being sued because he was involving himself in a private divorce in which he was recruited by Hillary Crowder to assimilate negative PR assets and put pressure on Stephen in the divorce. It really does look that way. It does. You want to make an argument about if someone is wealthy, they should have to pay the bills of the person suing them. I I, I don't care. The, the, The issue here is get rid of no fault divorce. And the issue here is then only in extreme circumstances. If a judge says, Crowder, you can't yell in front of your kids. Hillary, you can't yell in front of your kids. If he does, file a petition with the court and we will take punitive action. Other than that, you want to get a divorce? Congratulations. These are the circumstances you entered into. Hillary is not wealthy. Was Hillary wealthy before Crowder? Was Let's, let's try this uh, for Lauren. How much money was Hillary making at her career? Would she have made anything close to what Steven Crowder makes? I think the answer is no. Stephen Crowder is the 1%. So even if she had her career, she certainly would not have enough money right now to be going up against Crowder. And she would have to use child support to pay for a babysitter or a a caretaker to watch the kids while she worked, right? And then what? She would have some money left over, but she wouldn't be a stay-at-home mom. Simply because she's choosing to be a stay-at-home mom doesn't mean Crowder should have to pay the bills for someone suing him. 
I just, I, I, don't, I don't accept that. And then we have this from Alex Jones, highlighting the SCNR coverage. Jones says, Stephen has the documents and they are damning. I had similar things done to me. And in the end, it only backfired on the perps. I don't know who's right or who's wrong, but I can tell you, Jared's doing himself no favors by announcing he has a private business dispute with Crowder and raising, trying to raise a hundred grand and raising nearly all of it in a day. And then it comes out that he's been in contact with Crowder's ex-wife and he says he doesn't want Crowder to see his kids anymore. We're not talking about poor Hillary who, who can't afford to sue Stephen Crowder. We're talking about a third party, Jared Monroe, who for some reason is involved in a private marital dispute and explicitly stating that he wants Crowder not to be near his kids. I'm sorry. None of this is okay. Now, by all means, say Crowder's got emotional problems. He's got rage. He screwed over David Landau and Jared Monroe and all these people in business. I don't care. That has nothing to do with why Stephen Crowder has to pay the legal defense of his ex-wife or soon to be or whatever it may be. Or why Jared Monroe is getting involved in a marital dispute. Unless Crowder's correct. According to that text message or email, whatever it was, Hillary's father said, recruit people who can damage Stephen Crowder's business because it'll force him to back down and give her everything she wants, even though the courts would give her less. She said, Crowder's offering more than the courts would offer, but I want more. And so here's the game they're playing. I don't see how you see it otherwise. But you know what? I wonder. I'm not friends with Stephen Crowder. I mean, I guess technically we're friends. I don't talk to the guy. Talked to them maybe a dozen times in my life. We've talked about business things. He's been on the show. And there are people being like, Crowder went on Tim's show, so Tim's loyal to Crowder. I, did, I never talked to the guy. We mind our own business. I've been on a show a handful of times. I know the guys at the Daily Wire more than I know Stephen Crowder. And we had him on the show. I had every reason to defend Jeremy Boring. We've actually collaborated on projects with the Daily Wire. But I, my, my loyalty is to what seems to be true to the best of my abilities and what seems to be moral. And if someone like Stephen does something bad, I'll say he's doing something bad. But right now, I'm on the outside of this. I don't know what Crowder did. I don't know what he didn't do. But there are people who hate him. And there are people who are friends with his ex-wife. And there are people who, uh, you know, I, I assume... Lauren's perspective on this is being a mom. And my perspective is on being a guy and uh, not a dad and not dealing with divorces. But that that bias certainly splits our view. But I'll, I'll approach that comment from Lauren just from a principle from, from a principle standpoint. I don't care what your opinions are on divorce or anything like that. The idea that because someone some, because someone is wealthy and can afford lawyers, they should have to pay the legal defense of their opponent is too communist for me. The state being, it's unfair that this person has more money. Therefore, he has to pay the other person's legal fees too for the lawsuit against him. No way. In market capitalism, if you have the money, you have the ability. And if you don't have the money, you don't. If the issue is we need to solve for what, how we deal with mothers when it comes to this and they need some advantage, they need some, they need some leveled playing field. Well, I would certainly agree it is a problem that wealthy men will win against their, their wives because being a stay-at-home mom restricts their ability to generate value and wealth. That being said, the inverse is also true. Women could have money from family or from anyone else. Should they have to pay the legal defense of the husbands they divorce? It's a ridiculous notion. I'm going to wrap it up there. I mean, I guess it's a little short to wrap up. We should normally go 21 minutes, but uh, I don't know, I guess rant over. I don't know what's going on. I don't, I don't, I, I look, I don't know who's right or who's wrong. I'm telling you how I see things from the outside based on the news we got. Next segment's coming up tonight at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all then.